I am so happy to be in America where we can stand up in small towns and on live national television and speak truth to power. And that's because we have a First Amendment and notwithstanding the leader of this country's attempt to threaten, intimidate, and even encourage violence against the free press, we are still here. We don't resort to violence. I reject it. I want to say unequivocally there should be no whataboutism. I reject all attempts to go to people's homes and pound on their doors as we've heard. And I don't care who the commentator is. I don't care what they stand for. But years ago, we all joined together and said, Je suis Charlie. Do you remember this? Okay, that's who we are, that's why we're here, and that's in particular why this administration is so absolutely dangerous. Okay, why was Matt Whitaker unconstitutionally appointed? The answer is because he is a hired gun for the president to try to undermine and shut down any investigation by the Department of Justice, whether it's Mueller or in the Southern District of New York to go against Trump, his family, and any of his allies for the genuinely serious alleged crimes that they have committed. That's why he was hired, period. And unlike Donald Trump, who claims he doesn't know Matt Whitaker, I know Matt Whitaker. I do know Matt Whitaker, sort of. Um, the other day when I saw he was appointed, I had never really thought I'd heard his name, but just for the hell of it, I Googled and found out that the very first time I was ever on CNN, it was with Matt Whitaker. I was here in Amherst at one of these flash studios that was run by UMass. He was obviously at a studio in Iowa, and then the newscaster, the anchor was in DC. And I had never done live television, and it was two days after the New York Times had broken the story about Don Jr., Paul Manafort, and Jared Kushner, members of the Trump campaign, having met during the campaign, right, having met in June of 2016 with Russian nationals. And when the story first broke, it kind of trickled out. So when the fir story first broke, no one knew of Don Jr.'s emails that tell us now that he knew he was meeting with a Kremlin link lawyer. There's a lot of pieces missing. All we knew when we went on air and that morning of July 10th, 2017, a year later, was that this meeting had transpired and that supposedly the purpose was to get dirt on Hillary Clinton, but all they ended up maybe talking about was the Russian adoption. And what we had been told so far is Don Jr. had absolutely no idea, even now that those the folks there were Russian nationals. He apparently had, he went to the meeting without really knowing much of, he knew the agenda was to maybe find out dirt on Hillary, but he claims that neither Paul Manafort or Jared Kushner knew what the meeting was about. They just showed up without knowing the agenda or who was there. This is what we knew when we went on air. I'm in the studio with this little earpiece. I can see nobody at all, but I can hear this moron defending Don Jr. And I'm... You know, I haven't, if you've ever done TV, you're super scared that you're going to be like your normal self and wave your hands around and make weird faces. So I'm just sitting there with that. I'm surprised to see. I was totally freaked out, thought I was going to throw up and very nervous. But I had this serene look on my face going and occasionally a side eye. And then finally, I just start interrupting the guy because I'm like, you're crazy. You would advise someone to take this meeting. This is not credible. And I kind of went down the list of kind of anticipating what was going to happen next. Well, he was full on supporting Donald Trump at that time. And within hours, the emails leaked. So I got a couple questions about this Matt Whitaker, who is now apparently our acting attorney general, acting attorney general of the United States. What did he know and when did he know it? <coughs> Was he just trying to suck up to the Trump administration, showing up on TV and looking the part to try to get a job like he's telling folks? Or had he actually also had some information. We don't know at that point. But at some point, not just me and others, but at some point Donald Trump knew Whitaker. What we know now from the New York Times, again, these stories start to trickle out, what we know now from late night reporting is that he met several times 
with Trump. He was gunning. He was hot. So after he made his, he showed off on television, he gets this job working as the uh, chief of staff for Jeff Sessions, who's what used to be our attorney general until Wednesday. Right? Remember him? Terrible guy, but did one thing right. Recused himself from interfering in this Mueller investigation of the president's ties to Russia. Okay, so chief of staff Matt Whitaker was gunning for Jeff Sessions' job. So now we know that he was having private meetings with Trump in the White House and his allies. We also know not only was he gunning, first he was gunning for um, uh, to get directly in charge of the Mueller investigation by getting Rod Rosenstein's job, but no. But what he was doing, the first thing he was doing before he was trying to get to take over um, the Mueller investigation is he was encouraging the president to investigate Hillary Clinton. He was, and, and believe it or not, what we're hearing in the reporting is Jeff Sessions told Trump, don't do that. Don't politicize the Department of Justice. But there was Matt Whitaker, we know Matt Whitaker, encouraging Trump. Okay, so what I might, th there's also more. What do you know about Matt Whitaker? Turns out that he was a spokesperson and on the board of advisors for a scam company that was just shut down by the Federal Trade Commission that paid like a God knows tens of millions of dollars in fines just this past year, 2017 or 2018. And here's what's even crazier. Are you ready for crazy? The FBI is investigating him right now. Wait a minute, my head is hurting. Who supervises the FBI? The Attorney General, he still has not announced whether he's going to recuse himself from his own flippin' investigation. From what I read in the Twitter sphere, you're gonna love this if you like a little schadenfreude on your Saturday morning. This is just the beginning for Whitaker. Okay, so I think this is not just the beginning for his troubles, but it might be the end. I don't think he's going to be able to be acting attorney general. I think John's probably going to talk about some actions his organization is taking toward this. I cannot see Whitaker lasting. And if he stays, I cannot see our democracy lasting. He must step down. Okay. So what? I know I'm talking too long, but are you still listening? Okay, okay. So here's the... Uh, Here's the other story. Why do we care so damn much about the Mueller investigation? Why do we care? Why does Trump care? Why does Matt Whitaker care? I know there's that bit nice jacket that says, I don't care, do you? Well, guess what? Trump cares about this. And here's why. Mueller has been incredibly successful. In fact, he is a victim of his own success to some degree, because people, it's so annoying, people say, let's see what Mueller finds out. Well, hello, let's talk about what he has already accomplished. Paul Manafort, the chairman of Trump's campaign, not only was convicted by a jury on many federal criminal offenses, but he also pleaded guilty to other charges. He is going to be sentenced. This is the campaign chairman of the President of the United States of America, but that's not all. The deputy campaign chairman, Rick Gates, who went on beyond the campaign to be the deputy head of the inaugural committee, has also pleaded guilty to federal offenses and will also be sentenced. Thank you, Mueller, but there's more. And I'm now just talking about the Mueller investigation on people associated with Trump. We also have George Papadopoulos, who was the one-time um, foreign policy advisor for the Trump campaign, has also pleaded guilty, and he's actually been sentenced. And there's more. Thank you, Mueller. Remember this, Michael Flynn, who worked in this president's administration in the Trump White House as his national security advisor, has also pleaded guilty to federal offenses and will soon be sentenced. But there's more. Spinoffs from the Mueller investigation, which in fact may be the most important ones. There are many different federal jurisdictions, including the Southern District of New York, where the Trump's, uh, Trump's own personal lawyer, Michael Cohen, as you know, 
has pleaded guilty to several criminal offenses, two of which relate to criminal felonious campaign finance violations. And when he pleaded guilty to that, remember in his plea deal, he implicated the President of the United States. And what we found out just, was it just yesterday? Just yesterday in the most blockbuster news story that the Wall Street Journal has ever, ever broken, making me maybe think I will renew my subscription, but no, I'm still mad at the editorial board. Anyway, the reporters are great, but this story unbelievably builds on that and gives evidence that right now, the federal prosecutors in New York have enough information about Trump's involvement in the payoffs to Stormy Daniels and, um, why am I forgetting her name, Paul, uh, uh, McDougal, Karen McDougal, they have enough information about his coordination with the head of the National Enquirer, with his work with his own accountant, Alan Weisselberg, who has flipped, and so on. There's enough evidence right now that if he were not the President of the United States, he, Trump would be indicted, period. I cannot emphasize how important this article is in the Wall Street Journal. I am not being hyperbolic. Former federal prosecutors from the Southern District of New York were on the cable news shows, two people who I respect tremendously, and they absolutely said, this is enough information, if true, what the Wall Street Journal is reporting. The Wall Street Journal, you know, the bastion of left-wing anarchy. <laughs> what the Wall Street Journal is reporting, they interviewed 36 sources. If what they are saying is true, Trump would be indicted if he were not a sitting president. This is just a fact. This is where we are. But there's, but there's the, here's the thing, and I'm almost gonna, gonna wrap this up. What worries us is that this lawless president is known for pardoning people, for firing people, for hiring people like Whitaker, right? And that he may just shut down all of these federal investigations. He might just try to prevent these indictments or just pardon everybody, including himself, right? But I got some news for you. The states, New York, you know that song, if you can, can't make it there, you can't make it anywhere? Well, guess what? There are two women. One, Barbara Underwood, who is the current, current state attorney general for New York, and she's about to be replaced by the newly elected Tish James. People, when I need to be talk myself off to the ledge, I whisper the words over and over, Tish James. Tish James. Repeat after me. Tish James. Tish James. Here's the deal. There are many potential state criminal charges to still be brought against Donald Trump and his family related to just alone the Trump Charitable Foundation, but also I'm sure the tax return issues. Now, don't we still have the same problems? No, we don't. A president cannot pardon for state criminal offenses. Now, that means Don Jr., look out. That means Ivanka and Eric look out because you are being investigated. This is a fact. But what about Trump himself? Well, there is no precedent yet on whether a state criminal, you know, the state can prosecute a sitting president. There's neither precedent in the courts nor is there a policy. States have indicted their own governors. We know this. We just don't know whether a state would dare to indict a sitting president. But you know what I have to say? Tish James, repeat after me. Tish James, Tish James. Okay, love you guys, bye. <laughs>